Welcome everyone to this episode of, well, you see, I always start the, my shows with that line, but today is very unique and special because as you can see on screen, there's a whole lot of folks and we are doing what we are calling SuperPod. It is my honor and privilege to get together with some very fantastic folks. You all know them as my teammates on the various podcasts that we are part of. Joining us today for SuperPod are Susan Chisholm and Paul Britton from Real to Real Talk. And we will be teaming up with Vic Vespa and George Alvarado from the Three Dudes of Doom. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited. It's time for Super Five. Well, well, Sergio. Well, finally here with the movie nerds. Or <laughs> yeah, but I, I just want to... I just want to know why you didn't send us any like free samples of hot sauce so that you can incorporate all of your <laughs> all podcasting. Of yeah. yeah. Like what's the deal? Well, I found it difficult to talk after the one I tried. So I figured <laughs> I wouldn't do that too. <laughs> Still recovering. Still recovering. That's, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's time to, to get together and, and do what we love to do, which is talk uh, and, uh, you know, discuss things of a, Movie and wrestling nature. The, the, the whole idea behind Superpod was um, all of us enjoy movies. All of us are, you know, we love to talk. Uh, those of us that are on the pro wrestling pod, that's, you know, one of our biggest passions. And what we discovered is that there are some movies out there that uh, are pro wrestling related. And we thought, you know, what a unique idea it would be to put all of our minds together and spend some time discussing what I'm gonna call squared circle cinema. The squared circle, the wrestling ring uh, in professional wrestling as it's referred to, has really, really um, led to some uh, great films and some not so great films. And uh, I think we've landed a, in, in a sweet spot with the two movies that we're gonna talk about here on this episode because they cover uh, a range of what I'm gonna call realism in terms of how they portray the sport uh, of pro wrestling. And uh, as we progress through this conversation, it'll be interesting to get everybody's unique perspective because what these two films I think share in common is you don't necessarily have to be a professional wrestling fan to enjoy the movies for what they are. The two movies we're gonna discuss today on Superpod are The Wrestler and also Fighting With My Family, a recent release um, that again, both of these films land in the wheelhouse of professional wrestling cinema. One of the things that I kind of wanted to get a sense from all of you before we even get into a specific film is just, um, you know, you guys know that Vic, George, and I, uh, we, this is our focus is pro wrestling. Uh, Susan and then Paul, what are your connections, if any, to the world of pro wrestling? Is, is, you know, do you have any history with it? And we'll start with you, Susan. No, <laughs> my, right, my connection, let me, okay. <laughs> my, my only, my literally, my only connection to the pro wrestling world is, is, is through you guys because, um, y'all went to, um, WrestleMania last year the Royal Rumble. and I, the Royal Rumble, whatever, <laughs> yeah. God, give me a break. We and I was like, you, you guys were, you were like live tweeting to me what was going on. And I was just like watching on the on the the app and i was like okay i have literally no idea what's going on the app. but i did i learned a lot i learned a lot yeah i'm gonna turn really red now thanks That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh paul what about you yeah I, I i had cousins that were really into it like when i was growing up and in, in erie pennsylvania and <laughs> so i kind of had a little exposure through them you know that this is back in the Jimmy the Superfly Snooka and and uh, and all of that uh, and uh, you know uh, Hulk Hogan those guys uh, Andre the Giant and then uh, like I was working on a project in Minneapolis and the WWE was coming was playing on a Tuesday night and we were given tickets to go see them in the corporate box so I went to one wrestling event. 
and that's my connection to wrestling. <laughs> there was free food in the corporate box. <laughs> and there you go. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. And, and yeah. So, so again, you know, the, the two of you, <clears throat> Susan and Paul, are bringing the, you know, the cinema perspective that we talk about on our show. And as you guys know, George and Vic, as I am, heavily vested in the world of uh, professional wrestling. But gentlemen, the question I have for the two of you is, when it comes to movies, talk a little bit about, you know, sort of your level of interest. How deeply do you delve into the movie world when it comes to watching? Are you just casual fans or do you like to explore, um, you know, uh, movies and cinema? Uh, George, we'll start with you and then Vic. So... I'm not like one of the ones that has to go look into directors and like who wrote this and whatnot. Um, but I do like cinema and it's one of those where uh, pre COVID I was definitely going to the movie theater every week and there would be times where I'd invite you and whatnot. But um, it was just one of those where, yeah, I, for a while I was going what three, four months straight of every Friday, every Saturday, uh, yeah. going to the movies and hitting up every single new theater. Uh, or every single movie theater and then um, seeing new movies. So definitely I like that. Um, movies, yeah, my, I, I like old, I like old movies. I like new movies. So there's really, I, I like anything really. Anything that catches my interest, whether it's a rom-com or whether it's an action flick, I'm going to dive into the storyline on each one. <laughs> gotcha. All right. How big how about you? Um. <laughs> I am, I was really into movies, um, kind of late high school, mid to upper 20s. I still am very interested in movies, uh, but I, I would say I, I am not as knowledgeable on some of the newer, some of the new stuff um, as I was back in the day. Uh, that being said, like back in the day when I was really getting into it, it was when that huge indie boom kind of happened after Pulp Fiction. Um, I think that push a lot of people to really um, enjoy cinema. Um, you know, straight out of high school, my buddies and I would, you know, go into our backyards and even try to put together, you know, short films and stuff like that. So I used to be really into it. Um, nowadays, I am a avid fan. I still know a lot of the different directors who are out there. Um, and, but uh, I'm, I'm not like, scouring the the internet websites looking for information as much as I was in my younger years. Yeah. Well, uh, again, this sort of defines for me why I'm excited about this conversation because all of us are bringing a unique perspective, but all of us are interested in, you know, what, what the world of movies brings us, especially with the movies we're going to talk about today. So we begin with uh, 2008's The Wrestler. Uh, this film, uh, directed by Darren Aronofsky, starring Mickey Rourke and Marissa Tomei, uh, both who earned Academy Award nominations, uh, Best Supporting Actor, uh, Actress for Marissa Tomei and a Best Actor nomination for Mickey Rourke. Um, this film really uh, shows a side of the wrestling industry that is all too real. Uh, one of the things that uh, this film uh, was known for uh, in its telling of the story of Randy the Ram, um, a professional wrestler who is in the twilight of his career um, and in many ways doesn't realize it. He's living the dream, trying to at least, uh, still with aspirations to get back to his late 80s heyday, uh, which was the peak of his career as he uh, took part in an event in Madison Square, Madison Square Garden against the Ayatollah. This was sort of the peak and mountain, of the top of the mountain of his career. Uh, where When we meet Randy the Ram. Uh, he is down on his luck, uh, booking wherever he can. And as we begin our conversation on our thoughts on this film, let's talk story first. Uh, one of the reasons that this movie for me is very personal is because I've had opportunity to work within uh, some of the indie wrestling scene here in San Antonio. And so I've seen and met people who are the Randy the Rams of the world. And so uh, a very, very emotional film. So let's talk story first um, and how it affected us. Uh, Paul, I'd like to start with you. Um, just some overview and thoughts on The Wrestler from a story standpoint and your feeling about the film itself. I mean, it. Uh, so Darren Aronofsky, we got to start there. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, So, (laughs) I mean, this is a guy, I saw his first feature film, Pi, and was just absolutely in love with it. And then, so was ridiculously excited about when his second movie came out, Requiem for a Dream. And that movie killed me for movies where uh, people have drug problems for the rest of my life. Like I, it just, it it just obliterated the idea of going and watching a movie where somebody is, you know, self-destructive through a drug drug problem. And, uh, and it, 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 that's what this, that's what he does. Uh, um, Aronofsky is he destroys you for things. And um, little did I know that the wrestle, when I went and saw the wrestler in theaters, cause I was, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. I, I skipped his next movie, the fountain and then picked it. Uh, so the wrestler came out and it was getting great buzz. And I went and saw it. And there, first of all, there's more drugs. I should have known. I should have seen it coming, but no, I didn't. Um, and it just, it, it, I can never watch. I, will, I saw this when it was in theaters. I can't ever visit again because it is just such an emotional kick to the balls. I just can't deal with it. I, it's, it's I, the, what this person puts himself through that he refuses to allow himself even the slightest bit of happiness that is presenting it it's like here be happy in this and it's like no i'm gonna go do this other thing that is horrible to me and you know is destroying my life it's just i I, it's 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 i i mean i it, it it just sucks the air out of whatever room you're watching it in it's it it is such a a a kick in every part of your anatomy it just uh, it, it's exhaust. It's an exhausting movie. Even talking about it is exhausting. So, Vic, in your experience with the wrestler, talk a little bit about the impact of the of the story and and sort of from your perspective, how it landed with you. Well, it's 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 a you know it's a normal human story that's happened a million times in history. It's death of a salesman. Uh, you know, make make any comparisons you want to it's a very simple horrible beautiful story uh, of life um, but at, at its core I mean it's really simple it's it's what Aronofsky does with the presentation of it that's what truly makes it special he always drags you into some kind of dream world into some kind of dream state he, he, he's totally reminiscent of those who come before him, like, like a David Lynch. Um, and he does that with this movie in such a fascinating way. He drags you in by making you think it's almost a documentary. He pushes those cameras into people's faces. He comes to it with, you know, not necessarily the most cinematic eye. He, he, he drags you into the story and makes you live it along with the character. And that's what truly makes that story heartwarming is how he presents it to the audience. Yeah. I mean, and, and again, the, the, the realism of it, I think is, is really what's key because the, the descriptor uh, the description you just gave of how the camera's right there in the midst of it. I mean, for those of us who know the wrestling world, you know, you don't film a hardcore match, if you're trying to introduce it to people who've never been through it, you don't do it from afar. And this is something that even in the wrestling world, we haven't seen something this close up uh, in terms of uh, the types of matches that were shown in this, uh, in this story as the story was being told. Susan, um, again, you talk about how, you know, we, bet we, we sort of introduced you to the world of wrestling just a little bit earlier this year. Yes. As you watched this film, what were some of the impacts that you, you felt uh, as you experienced uh, the movie for the first time? So I'm going to say that there were things I was aware of vaguely, but I didn't really know much detail about. And in fact, when he, okay, so after, of course, doing research, you, I texted you in the middle of the movie, in all caps, why the fuck? <laughs> his own forehead open. And you were like, let me explain. Whoa, whoa. And then a little bit later on, I was like, let me tell you my thoughts about thumbtacks and staples. They don't belong on a human body. <laughs> and you were like, no, 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 that's, that's what it is. And you know, we went into discussion about what, what and why it was. Um, 
it was really, it was a really intense, I guess, view. It was, it was a, um, a crash course for me, essentially. Um, the story, you know, the story going into about like, you know, him trying to, to fall back into having a normal life when he's starting to realize what's going on. Um, he, he wasn't able to keep going. He fell into his old habits and it was like, this is all he knows. So for me watching it and, and not really knowing a lot of what was going on and having to do a lot of research after watching it, um, it was, it was, it was a little intense. (laughs) Um, but I mean, you know, after learning about it, it's like, okay, I understand everything now. Like, you know, the, the show is the most important thing. So that, that was a lot of what I, what I got out of it. Yeah. For, for people that far down the rabbit hole, it, it certainly is. George, uh, I don't, I wouldn't say that this movie is a glorification of anything in pro wrestling that's sort of, you know, extreme and such, but um, the, the matches that Randy the Ram has left to accept that he's needing to accept at this point to make his rent uh, are what we see in the indie scene, things like uh, hardcore extreme matches, you know, things of that nature. As you watched it, what were some of the feelings you went through as someone who knows what this sport is about? Yeah, um, definitely. Like, you know, I saw this movie when it came out in the theater. So back then it was, um, you know, you only had somebody like Ric Flair, which you can probably relate it as close as possible, which he uh, went on to retire. um, And it was hard for him. Whereas now you have guys like, uh, you know, more of The Undertaker, the Shawn Michaels, um, Hulk Hogan, where they're now way, (laughs) with respect, they're not way past their prime, but they're, you know, they're already kind of fading away. And it's one of those where letting those, uh, letting off the reign of wrestling at this point. Um, you know, you kind of just look at it now where, and I even shared it with you, um, like a, an anniversary show where it was uh, Jerry Lawler and the uh, Rock and Roll Express and um, Coco Beware and guys that, that haven't been relevant with respect in the last maybe 10, 15 years. Uh, 20 years so it's kind of like you see where there are these moments and of course you're going to have the fans you're going to have the nostalgic fans uh you're going to have the ones uh you know uh like paul where as paul mentioned uh, guys like hulk hogan um you know he's going to be like oh i want to go definitely see something with hulk hogan in it okay well he doesn't know too much about the rest of the card but it's that attraction it's that appeal so again it's what he's going to grab for Whereas someone like Susan, she might say, oh, well, I recognize that name. That's uh, John Cena. He was in Ferdinand as a voice, you know? So it's one of those, it's kind of like taking where you can get it at, taking what, uh, taking what you can get um, and pretty much any kind of moment you're going to try to get to, you're going to do it. Ferdinand. With that being said, you're going to have a lot of those matches that really don't make sense. Plenty of indie wrestlers go on to say, They've wrestled in front of people like five to ten people at a time. Uh, they've wrestled in front of three people at a time. It could be the mom, the dad, and the child. Okay, well, now they got paid 25 bucks to make a, a road trip that was $100 in gas. Uh, or what is it, $100 in airfare? And it's kind of like they're, they're, a lot of those wrestlers, whether young or old or guys like in Randy's position, they're going to take whatever they can get. And... <laughs> It might just be for five minutes of exposure to say, hey, I'm over here in, a, you know, in your location near you. Come visit me. Okay, well, you're going to have that one person go see him. That's a little bit of exposure. So it's that movie, it's, you know, from him doing the indie shows to him being at the VFW uh, with the rest of the older wrestlers. It's kind of like he had that little mind experience and he's just like what's going on <laughs> yeah you know so it's you, you see that in a lot you know with us being uh with us seeing a lot more interviews for wrestlers you know we see that with the wrestlers talking about it they're like i've wrestled this i've wrestled that here's this this is my situation from a week ago this was a situation from 25 years ago i wrestled in front of one guy i've wrestled in front of a, a thousand people you know so yeah. it's it's too many it's too close to home. And I can only imagine from their perspective, the actual guys that are doing it day to day. Yeah. The scene in the VSW hall that you talk about when they have sort of that legend signing, they're talking about how, you know, we're expecting a big crowd and no one shows up. It's, you know, 
Um, <clears throat> you know, guys, uh, Vic and, and George, we, we were at a show last year some, at some point, and I think there were maybe 12 people in the crowd. And if you didn't count our Derby sisters who were there to promote our league, like we had a table at this wrestling event and the, the, the team doubled the number of fans that were in the house. And, mm. you know, so we, we've, we've been in this environment and, and, you know, there, I, I was, I was talking to Susan yesterday and the way I described the indie scene that is so prevalent within the movie uh, is this, the, the indie scene is where careers begin and where unfortunately many careers go and refuse to die. And that is the story of Randy the Ram. He just can't let it go because he knows nothing else. I mean, he's, he's lost his daughter. He's not able to create a relationship. And at the core point of the movie, right before the, the climactic match, he talks about how, you know, this is the only place where I'm loved. You know, this is, you know, and to have only that, uh, it's, it's uh, to, to reference Paul back to your comment, it's that gut punch of having nothing to fall back on because you really thought this was going to be the thing that was going to carry you to glory, so to speak, within the context of your life. And, and unfortunately, for every, you know, wrestler that is successful in this industry and climbs the heights of fame and, and, and has money in the bank and saved, uh, there's a ton of Randy the Rams out there. And that's why I think this movie, for me, hits so close to home because I've I've been amongst those people and several of us have. Um, from a cinematic standpoint, this movie is filmed in a very unique fashion. Um, Paul, we're gonna come back to you. Talk a little bit about the, the, your thoughts in terms of the cinematography, uh, just overall Aronofsky's approach to how he put this film together. Yeah, Vic mentioned it earlier when he was given his review, which is basically, it, it has that sort of, uh, 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 documentary feel so you you there's a lot of you know hand cams right in people's faces um you're getting a lot of reaction shots from the side and the back and you know just and it's grainy but that's all like it, it's it, you know it, you you almost smell the movie like that's how gritty and how uh, you know how, just how uh just earthy the, the 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 cinematography is and and the camera work and and you know it it it's just every, it, it all of your senses are just drawn in and it, it's yeah it, again it's a tough movie to get through <laughs> it's yeah. not easy yeah i can't imagine what it was like filming it um uh. vic uh we see if we if we look closely we see some names that you know came out of the ring, the ring of honor Big system uh, yeah the, talk a little bit about that some of the faces you saw Vic, that stood out to you that you said hey that's i know that guy you know any, did anything like that happen to you oh well definitely with the ayatollah uh character yeah um, when i saw him i was like oh man that's old school um <laughs> that got me excited i you know, there was a scene, and I tried to verify this, uh, in that uh, indie show he's at early on. Uh, there's a dude in the back, and I swear it's Xavier Woods uh, from The New Day. But I haven't been able to confirm it on the cast list or anything, so it may be just somebody who has the, the exact same gimmick as him. But yeah. um, that was what I was, I was hoping to get. Of course, it is always an absolute honor to see Mr. R-Truth on the screen. And it was, that, that was a joy. I, I knew he wasn't gonna be R-Truth, like, you know. And at the, at the point, um, I don't even think he was in the WWE at the time that this movie came out. No. Um, so he wasn't even really in, in um, you know, he was the R-Truth character that we know today, I should say. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'll wrap this up quick. Uh, but this time seeing him in the movie uh, pop up and being like, oh, true. It was, it was a lot yeah. of fun. Uh, yeah. I, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, not a ton of WWE talent. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, they kind of waited until after this movie to kind of get behind it. Yeah. Uh, it was endorsed after. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, if, you, if you do look well, closely. Go ahead, Paul. 
I was going to say, well, Vince McMahon wasn't going to get any money out of it. So, of course, they weren't going <laughs> to endorse it before. Not initially. Yeah, not initially. Although he did, <laughs> he did come out after and, and he spoke of it in very glowing terms uh, because it tells yeah. us it tells a story of an aspect of the business that unfortunately doesn't get enough of a spotlight. Um, and so, uh, Susan, as you were watching uh, this film, sort of with the cinematic eye that we use on, on Real to Real Talk, talk a little bit about your thoughts on how it was filmed and what stood out to you uh, in terms of how this movie was put together. Um, so in terms of the filming, um, you know, the, the guys have already said that, that you know, the, the, the quick in your face cuts, the, the, the shots of like the real intense emotion on people's faces was a lot of, was a lot of what I caught there. Um, it was very realistic in terms of like, I could feel, I, I could feel like I was there. Um, the, the way that the actors, like the way that specifically like Mickey Rourke had, his face doesn't move a lot. He's not very emotive in his face, yeah. but he was still able to convey like you could feel what he was feeling just by the look on his face or the way that he was looking, I guess. Um, something that the, the way that he delivered his lines, the way that he, you know, just was right on, right on target in terms of like making sure you knew what was, you, you felt what was going on. Yeah. Um, and with, say with Marissa Tomei, she, she's very facially emotive and you could feel like the awkward silences. You could feel the, uh, I, I, I gotta, I gotta go. I'll be right. You know, like <laughs> kind of, <laughs> you felt that, that, that real, that realness in it. Um, and I think that, that the way that everything's put together, it really was able to make that, that message come across and you could feel you, you were drawn in and felt it. Yeah. That, you know, in a moment when we talk about the cast, I mean, you know, Marissa Tomei, obviously, uh, along with Mickey Rourke, the sort of the central focus of the film, uh, Evan Rachel Wood with two heart-wrenching scenes, one in which things go so well, and then one when things just don't. And uh, therein lies sort of the realist, the realism of, of what his life is. Um, George, as you watch this film play out, um, especially from how the, the wrestling scenes were filmed, did anything stand out to you that you know, we watch wrestling from a certain lens. Darren Aronofsky, of course, came at it a certain way. Uh, along with what else has been said, did anything else stand out to you from how this movie was filmed and, and how it impacted you? Um, without using the F word, because the F word is permitted on the, the show. We don't use the word fake. <laughs> I don't know what um, you're... Oh, fake, got it. Really? No, we don't use fake. Oh, use fake. <laughs> oh okay. okay. The word yeah. fake, yes. Um, the, it really gives you... You know, in the movies, you always have a good storytelling. Uh, in wrestling, it's just as important. Uh, in a match, it's just as important. You know, you have the beginning, you have the the middle, which is to try to keep everybody's attention. And then you have the finish, which is either going to be a good guy or a bad guy winning. Or some kind of screw job ending, which is going to keep you with the storyline. Keep you, you know, make you purchase the next match again. Sure. Um, with every single match, you felt that you had a... From the uh, first match that he did, um, well, you know, I know. Let's talk about yeah, the first match that he did, uh, where he was uh, doing the blade job. Uh, you know, getting he, you know, you saw where he got the blade, he broke it in two, put it in his wrist, taped it up. You know, did the whole getting ready, uh, went outside, um, and then you know they did their thing to just the pre-match rituals, which hey, what do you want to do? Oh, you know, just bring the cheap heat, and I just resonated so much because it's bring the cheap heat. To us, you know, to us three, we know what the word heat is. Heat is pretty much the term of, you know, you're, you're wanting to get all the bad stuff. You're wanting to draw all the negative. Uh, you know, if I'm going to slap somebody in the face, I'm expecting them to boo the heck out of me. That's heat. Um, and that's what he did. He said, hey, I want you to do that. Sure enough, you see the low blow. You're like, oh my God, <laughs> even cringeworthy on the low blow. Um, and then finally he goes down the 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 heel i forgot his name the, the skinny guy he ended up um you know dragging the referee he was getting the referee's attention um and then at the same time he was ram was cutting himself open again sometimes those things are done the hard way sometimes they're done the easy way and get knocked over with a chair this is one of the scenarios of a hard way in regards to a blade cutting him open and then he just did that spread it off and that's pretty much the catch the moment 
a lot of people say, oh, that's fake. That's not fake. That's real freaking blood. So you have that match. You have the way it went over to just the hardcore CZW match. We've talked about it on our show before. CZW, YouTube it if you haven't. You will not ever... You'll probably have to delete your browser history after watching CZW matches. Um, But, you know, everything from the staple gun. Yeah, the staple gun. You know, whether you're watching it from the cinematic style or whether you're watching it from the wrestling style, there's no way of taking a staple to the chest. Any easy way. There's no fake way of doing that. Uh, Dropping on the piece of glass. We've seen glass go bad. Shane McMahon versus Kurt Angle a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Glass didn't break. Shane almost broke his neck. Um, you know, they did a, what is it? A, I think they, did they do barbed wire? I, mm-hmm. I remember. I thought of, oh, they yeah. do barbed wire. Sabu, Terry Funk, Mick Foley, Undertaker, um, Shane McMahon, Jeff Hardy, the list goes on. Um, Abyss, and those matches are Tommy Dreamer, anybody in ECW, really bad. Yeah. And again, so no matter what you're watching, you have the beginning, the end, the finish. I'm sure that if we would have watched those matches, it would have been hard to watch the full length of those matches. But again, you appreciate those from the cinematic aspect of it just because you see that it's not just, oh, I'm going to jump around spot fest, spot fest, spot fest. No, it's let's get in the ring. Let's wrestle around. Let's do that. Let's fight. Necro Butcher even said, oh, uh, you know, I'm okay with anything. No running. You know, no, no running, my knees are bad. But he's yeah. willing to take a glass bulb. He's willing to do this. He's willing to do that. So it's like, yeah. Just don't make me run. Yeah, just don't make me run. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, it, it's one of those where the, you, you and even just a main event, you know, we'll talk about that, whatever. Um, but just a main event where you can, you can kind of feel the, the feeling of it, where he's like, are you okay? The moment Ram started going down, he's like, are you okay? Plenty of matches. We've seen it. Botchamania, go watch them. The guys are actually talking back and forth, saying, hey, did I did I smack you too hard? Did I push you too hard? Did I run you against the ropes too hard? You know, they're talking back and forth. Ram starts falling on the ground. He goes, no, just pin me. Just end it. End it. We've seen those matches before. So, again, there's just there's a lot of resonating full-length matches where we've seen it in the wrestling world. Here's it in front of the camera. It's the indie secrets. It's the wrestling secrets. It gives you full length, but beyond belief, none of those are fake moments. All of those are pure, yeah. 100% real. <laughs> That's what Aaron Off, he does a great job of capturing within this film. And he did it very much on purpose in the indie scene, because that's where the story, of course, takes place. But, you know, he got the, the blessing of Combat Zone Wrestling, of Ring of Honor, um, of, you know, whatever that New Jersey indie uh, organization was at the beginning of the film. You know, these are groups that we know that are real and they would never have endorsed this kind of project if they weren't going to feel like it was going to tell the story uh, in a way that's real. By the time that the film itself ends, of course, we're left with that that sort of mystery ending. Uh, it's left to us to decide, does he die or does he not? Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't think, I read an article last night that really talks about how beautiful an ending it is because we, it is left to us. Uh, we're, we're trusted with the conclusion of the story um, but what everybody knows, uh, by the time the last uh, moment rolls and, and the film cuts to black, is that live or die, this is the only life he has. It is, the, the, it's going to continue to cycle, um, you know, back to what he knows. Uh, and, and I don't know how this is going to sound, but there is that, that part of me that, you know, knowing it's a movie and that it's a story, there's a part of me that hopes he didn't survive the, the match because his life was in ch- such a shambles outside of it. Um, and so um, Aronofsky does a great job of leaving. Usually I hate those kinds of endings, but it, it was such an emotional roller coaster that I was glad there wasn't a definitive end, that it was left to my imagination. Frankly, because I was able to escape the the story quicker <laughs> than if I had known exactly what happened. So, uh, very unique decision on the part of Aronofsky to end the film that way. Uh, any final thoughts on the wrestler? Uh, you know, as we prepare to uh, to close this portion of the discussion out. Anybody? What's really going to bake your noodle later is that 
the uh, heart attack was just an angle for the fans. Oh, <laughs> because we because we've seen stuff like that. This is the, this is the weird part. To your point, Vic, is if you've been watching wrestling for any number of years, unfortunately, this is some of what people will do. Uh, in fact, when Jerry Lawler had his heart attack, yeah, I mean, Jerry Lawler had a real heart attack on the air. And for a couple of days, people were wondering if it was a word, was it fake? It's like, no, the guy was in the hospital. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, back to uh, Paul. What was your phrase? A, a punch in the balls, I believe is what you said. Yeah, kick in the balls. It was, kick in the balls. It, yeah, it's a, it's a kick in the balls. Yeah. yeah. This movie is for kick in the balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. All right. Well, <clears throat> again, uh, you can find the wrestler on streaming. Uh, it is for a price. Uh, if you can spring the four bucks, it's worth it. Uh, Darren Aronofsky uh, has put together a story that, again, has been endorsed by the wrestling industry as uh, being uh, as true a story as possible in terms of how it portrays the industry. So make sure you catch it uh, if you feel like you've got the heart for it, because it is a tough watch. All right, from there we go to Lighter Fair in the form of a movie that came out recently um, that is sort of the feel-good moment of the night, and that is a movie called Fighting With My Family. Fighting With My Family, I'll be the first to say that when it was first previewed on the WWE Network when it came out uh, back in 2019, it's about a year before the film came out that I started to see ads and trailers and so forth, and I was just like, yeah, I think I'll skip that. I had no desire whatsoever to see this movie because right from the get-go, the trailers, you could tell it was sort of this cheesy approach. Uh, but it, at least at the time, uh, Vic and George and I were working already on the show and they were all excited about it. And so I'm glad that we all are gonna get a chance to sort of talk about what we thought of this film because this is, this, this is a based on a true story. Uh, this uh, Fighting With My Family tells a story of the uh, entry into the bright lights of the WWE of one page. Uh, page, uh, by the time this film came out, uh, I wanna say, and Vic and George, correct me if I'm wrong, I wanna say that by this point, she had had to go into retirement by the time the movie was, was released. Uh, but she had a stellar career that began as a young child. And uh, by the time she hits the WWE as a, as a young uh, wrestler, she's already been in the business for 10 years. And so, what was cool about fighting with my family for myself and those of us who watch wrestling is that we actually saw the moment that is portrayed at the end of the film. I want, I know I saw it when it happened on television, guys, I think you did as well. Uh, so this film again exists within the world of pro wrestling, but it's actually found the story of a real individual that, uh, that many of us are big fans of. So I'd like to start Susan with you. Uh, and get you and Paul's views on this film initially first, sort of impressions that you had. And then we'll talk about, you know, um, you know, what we thought about it from a cinematic standpoint. So Fighting With My Family, Susan, I'll turn it over to you and then we'll go to Paul. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was a neat, I thought it was cute. Um, I, I liked the, you know, I, just, don't, don't, don't oh, it's good. you're laughing at me and now I'm going to turn right again. Um, I, I thought it was, I thought it was a neat story. Like I, I've heard of Paige and, and I, I know two, at least two of my really good friends who are into wrestling um, are, have, have talked about her before and a you know, number of other names. It was when we were, when y'all were at the Royal Rumble, like I was, I was messaging with you and I was messaging with my other friend from high school and, and we were talking about all the different people and stuff like that. And he was trying to go into stories about it. Um, this, the movie itself, I, I, I liked that it had all of the elements of like, you know the same the same thing the conflict that the, the the conflict that she went through and her brother at the same time went through similar but but you know different and then they, they both everything kind of resolved towards towards the end for them as, as a family and and because it's it's important for for it to be a family friendly thing and it was um it was neat the, the movie was neat because i was looking at the familiar faces and 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 seeing all the different people that i've seen before and in different movies and i'm like oh i know that person from so and so but it was easy for me to turn that off and be like, okay, this is watch the movie. So um, yeah, my favorite moment was when you messaged and asked me if that was Cersei that was in And that was probably within like the first like five or ten minutes of the movie, I think. And I was like, hey wait a minute. 
Yeah, and Paul, I said it's also <laughs> Nick Frost from Hot Fuzz. So yes, it is. <laughs> Sean, yeah, so what was my reaction to that? Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> So Paul, your thoughts uh, and impressions on Fighting With My Family? So I love Stephen Merchant. Um, he col he's a collaborator with Rick Ricky Gervais. He helped mm -hmm. create The Office and the Extras. Um, he was also in the Ricky Gervais uh, show, which was a cartoon with him and, uh, uh, oh God, I can't remember the other guy's name, but um, I can't remember, can't believe I can't remember the other guy's name, but it'll come to me. Um, so I'm a huge fan of Stephen Merchant. So I, when I saw that he was the writer and director, I got really excited. And then they, uh, the movie starts and the kid is wearing a Norwich jersey. And I'm like, wait a second. He's wearing a Norwich jersey. Why would he be wearing a Norwich jersey? And it turns out it's filmed in Norwich, which I randomly have been to. Um, and my favorite uh, English soccer club is, are the Norwich Canaries. And so Norwich City. And... So like, I was really excited about that. And so early in the movie, it was like, wait a second, I've been there. No, I've been there. So that was kind of fun. And I, and then it just turned into, it, it, this movie is just a formula. It, it just, it follows the formula it, and it's fine. It's fine. You know, <laughs> of, of course she was going to be tempted to quit. And of course, you know, she was going to visit her family and not quit. And of course, she, you know, it's, it was just, yeah. I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's just, it's fine. It fit into a framework that we're familiar it, with. <laughs> very, very far. And my, my favorite thing is, is that like, so I went and, and read about her afterwards and, I, and sure, I should have known this. Like, so she was on NXT for like two years or something before, uh, you know, she, she was, but no, 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 we can't have that happen in the movie. It has to happen in like six months, you know? Right. Like she, so yeah, whatever. I, I'm actually appreciative of the fact that you went and found that out because that was one of my beefs with this film yeah. was, you know, well, we, but, you, you almost know too much. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, but that's a, the thing is, is though that that's the problem with these formula movies is, is that they have to fit the formula and you, we can't show her doing this for more than a week. You know, <laughs> she has to get, you got to get to the end. Yeah. You, got, you can't, you can't, you know, so. Yeah. That and the fact that they filmed the, the that final match as if like, ooh, can she win? When we all know that it's all decided beforehand, you know, so. So I actually <laughs> do have a genuine question about that final match. Did sure. she literally like choke and not say a single word before the fighting started? Like, she, she okay, say, okay. Because I hated that. Like that was, that was so stupid. Like, yeah. I'm like, there's no fucking way they're having this person who <laughs> choke on national te like there no i yeah. just i i hated that aspect of it i literally yeah. like i was like i was just i was just like oh this is so dumb so but that's fine <laughs> i think I, fine. yeah i think i told vic and, and george that that was sort of one of my issues with it because <clears throat> if you go back and watch the actual exchange that happened on live tv it's so much more dramatic so why can't you but because so much of the story was this sort of coming of age story uh, that yeah, again, if you know fine. Paige's history, you, that really wasn't the story to tell uh, because by the time she's hit the WWE, NXT, whatever the case might be, she's already been wrestling for so many years. Um, that's where, you know, yeah. It, the, and this is where it, it's, it's that interesting decision of making a film <clears throat> that's gonna have an appeal beyond the wrestling, wrestling world. Events. And so right. uh, Vic, we'll start with you. And then I want to go to, to, to George to get the perspective because we, the three of us have waited for a long time to have this conversation. Uh, so I'm curious to your thoughts, Vic, uh, on the film itself and its, its effectiveness given what we know about the story and, and the wrestling world. When I first heard that this movie was being made, um, I was extremely skeptical because wrestling movies aside from the wrestler are awful. Anything mm -hmm. made by the WWE, by WWE studios aside from the movie Oculus, which is actually a pretty decent horror movie, but doesn't have any like WWE wrestlers or anything in it. Um, it's actually a really good movie. Um, and when I heard about this, I was extremely skeptical a because I am pageaholic and B because wrestling movies just generally don't work. 
I heard Stephen Merchant was involved. And my ears were like, Boop. I heard Lena Headley was involved. Nick Frost was involved. Um, who am I missing everybody? Because my brain just doesn't work all the time. Um, Florence The Rock. Yeah, Florence, 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 I don't know how to pronounce her last name. She is dope AF. Putting it down there, go see Midsummer. Go watch Midsummer after oh, yeah. you watch. Oh. If you're done podcasting with me right now, and you will thank oh, me. Yeah. I heard, I heard nope. all that crazy s, and I was like, "Well, I got to see this movie. It's it's got to be at least decent." And it did turn out decent. Um, I think they did take, like you guys were saying, they did take, um, they did take, they did embellish the story a bit. Um, obviously, even when Paige, well, at the, at the time, Brittani, even when she, I remember reading wrestling news articles when she got pulled over to the WWE. It wasn't NXT at that point. Um, but when she, when she was brought into the system and, you know, they were super excited about this 18 year old who had been wrestling for however long. Um, I know for sure though, that she had, and still does um, have very, very high issues of, of not being able to see her family. I can't think of the words, uh, but she has, you know, she, she had a hard time um, just being away from her family because she was completely isolated over here in America. Yeah. So that part of the movie, I believe is a hundred percent true. Um, Although the the part of them like holding her like below everyone else that that is utter crap because I know they were kind of trying to build a new women's division and, and she was going to be an integral piece into that. Um, but yeah, w once I heard those folks were involved, I was I was all in. Um, I think we can complain that it was a simple story, a paint by numbers type situation if we want to call it that. No difference than the movie we talked about. You know, you know exactly what's going to happen from the beginning to the end, even though we don't get to see, you know, the actual resolution uh, of the movie. Uh, there's nothing, you know, there's, there's nothing about these stories that aren't completely human. Um, I think a lot of what was in, you know, Fighting With My Family was true. Did they embellish on her time in NXT? Yes, I think they did. Did they change the ending a little bit? Yes. They also changed AJ Lee completely at the end. Um, if you guys ever get a chance to revisit some of this stuff afterwards, go back and watch that actual match to see who AJ Lee is because another face who is getting buried by the WWE, but she's the whole reason that the women's evolution wrestling is even happening. Um, but I mean, again, something else that they changed for the movie wasn't the best in my opinion, but I give big props to Selena Vega for being an incredibly um, lifelike, not being a, not being a, a parody or anything of AJ Lee, but really like doing at least you know, vocally, um, her, her mannerisms, you know, yeah. getting AJ Lee down to, to a science. So yeah, yeah. that's kind of what I thought about the movie in a nutshell. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great depiction of some of those key moments, especially that, that last scene, as much as I have a complaint about how it's written, given what really happened, there were aspects of it that really were true to what we saw visually the night that it happened. George, as you watched this movie and thought about, you know, what what you knew occurred in real life and how this story plays out, any thoughts that you would add, um, you know, that for, from your viewpoint of this movie? So I had one of those light bulb moments right before we started the show. And I was like, oh my God, there's the wrestler, which the wrestler is after the twilight years and after the prime years and pretty much the end off story whereas page is more of the beginning so we pretty much all we need to do is like one more movie show of in the middle and i'm pretty sure we just showed up like the, the whole chronicles yeah the whole story <laughs> of the wrestling life the whole cycle of the wrestling so i had that light bulb moment so yeah i just thought i'd mention that um the there's two things i want to mention for paul 
So Paige is not only a former Divas champion. She's actually a former NXT women's champion. So she was my, the she's... only one to hold both belts at the oh, same yeah. I'm so, time. I'm so proud of you for that. I am so proud of you. <laughs> so we're, we're actually looking to replace Sergio. So if you oh, want to wow. uh, okay. huh? No, I would not uh, be able to step in his um, <laughs> No, like... Uh, I would miss one yeah. episode. <laughs> <laughs> and so where'd he go? Oh, Paul's the new Sergio. <laughs> um, <laughs> the but yeah, just for the sole fact of that, it's like she was again. Where we can go on some details of certain spots, certain jabroni beaten pie eating trailblazing eyebrow raisin, son of a gun was never at the freaking O2 arena. We can talk about right. that. Yeah. He was never there. Um, but well, how do you know? That, he was just stopping by to say hi. Yeah, no, like, trust me, like, the uh, dirt sheets would have, like, blown up with The Rock is going to make a special appearance or The Rock is yeah. going to tape something special. So we would have he heard didn't. about that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, the, just the just the whole thing. And I have one little tidbit of between both of the movies is uh, to a wrestling, like, wrestling fan, it was pretty much the equivalent to a Marvel movie with the Easter eggs. These two movies had a lot of Easter eggs where you're like, oh, I know that wrestler. Oh, I know that wrestler. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's this. There's this. There's yeah. that. So it's kind of like you really get that, that, that sense of, you know, with the wrestler, you had all those little moments of, oh, I know this person. There's our truth. I know this arena. I know that brand. With Paige, you had more of, uh, and it was not till more of towards the end of the movie where you're like, oh, I know that. That's the Miz. Oh, he definitely is still a jerk in the movie, you know? Oh, there's the big show. There's Seamus. They're still hilarious, you know? Um, yeah. The uh, And then, of course, just the Titan Tron, the, the entrance music. I can care less. Like, it's going to be in a movie. It's going to be in a TV, like, in, a, in an actual TV show. I like entrances. I like music. I like all that stuff. Um, and it was one of those where both of them still had that, where you get, a, you get engaged with just their entrance, engage with the fans, yeah. The fact that, you know, the fans are kind of like, who's this page? Who's this page? I'm sure that if we were to go back, there was some people that did not watch NXT and Paige. Sure. It would have been like, oh, who's that? Who's that? Oh, I'm going to root for AJ Lee. She's been the longest reigning Divas champion. So you, you still had that comparative. You still had that realism there. Um, and just pretty much, you know, the, the whole thing of the WrestleMania where Paige gets off of that contract, that actually took place. That was yep. an actual WrestleMania. That was him showing up at a WrestleMania, introing the set was uh, the New Orleans WrestleMania, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which was, what, four or five years ago. Um, so, it, again, it's just those little, the Easter eggs of, oh, I remember that. Nope, that didn't happen. Oh, but that did happen. That yep. is that person. So... I don't know, like uh, just between both the movies, I, I liked it for those those little key moments because again, it's still, although not a hundred percent accurate, one might not be really fictional than non-fiction. I don't know how to say it. Whatever, it, it's it, you still recognize it for sure. those two factors. Oh yeah, one of my favorite moments in the wrestler was uh, right before the Ring of Honor show begins. You see uh, who the guy who I know. Uh, as Claudio Castagnoli, who became Cesaro in the WWE. Uh, you know, I saw him at a Ring of Honor show as Claudio Castagnoli, and there he is in the background, full head of hair. And, uh, you know, just, again, it's those moments you're talking about. Uh, what I do like about Fighting With My Family uh, is the sort of the capture of that moment where she wins the belt. Uh, she is, it's one of those, what we now know and celebrate as, you know, a Monday after WrestleMania moments. Uh, which are now a thing year to year. And she was, she has one of the, you know, Paige has one of the greatest highlights ever where she comes in brand new, wins the title on her first night, and then proceeds to have uh, a short, but very, very impactful career. And so um, I think overall for myself, Fighting With My Family sort of lands me in the area of what was said earlier and that it's a cute movie. It really is. Uh, I like that I can relate to a lot of what I saw, but Again, it's just one of those things where by the end, I'm like, all right, this is, this is cool. Um, but it's not something I'd go back to very often uh, to, to watch again. But 
um, you know, it's, it's, it, was, it was put together to appeal to a larger audience, even beyond uh, the, the wrestling fan. And so, uh, again, a, a, a decent attempt at capturing uh, the world of wrestling in a lighter way uh, as compared to the wrestler. Um, as we start to wrap up our discussion, one of the things that I've loved is, is getting to hear your perspectives, you know, from the different ways in which we approach our shows. Uh, any final thoughts on wrestling cinema and uh, its impact? Uh, Susan, we'll start with you, then we'll, we'll go around the table just for final thoughts on these two films and the experience you had watching them. They were, you know, like, like it was said, they were, they were polar opposite movies, but they were both equally entertaining and, and educational. For me, I don't know if that okay. makes any sense. Sure. <laughs> it, it, it not only not only did it, the movie itself teach me, but it 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 triggered me to start doing research and learn things as well. So, yeah, it was awesome. I like that. I like that. <laughs> All right, fantastic, Vic. What about you? Uh, the landscape of wrestling movies is a horror show that will never be <laughs> run, uh, rivaled true. by any human attempt at it. Uh, so it's nice to have a couple of movies that are actually really, honestly, I, I like both of these movies quite a bit. Um, I think they were very well executed um, and a lot of love, I think, not just uh, by, you know, the, the wrestling groups that are involved, but by the actual people who go into making the movies. If, you know, if you go, up, go back and watch some of the behind the scenes, and hear, you know, like Stephen Merchant talking about it, or like, you know, some of the, some of the actors uh, from <coughs> my family talking about, you know, how when they would get in the ring, they would be like nervous to screw up in front of the wrestlers and, you know, not make, you know, what they do seem like a, you know, a serious deal. Uh, they were very, you know, they were, they were very um, aware of that. And they were, you know, trying to, really make the industry look good instead of just turning into some kind of joke. And I think stuff like that um, can really, you can see it, I think, in a lot of movies. Um, you can see that extra bit of effort that they put into it. And I'm glad they did. Um, and like I said, I like them both. Um, obviously, The Wrestler, a little bit more on the highbrow side, um, especially with all the awards that you were trying to throw at it. But um, yeah, I enjoy them both. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Venice Film Festival won the grand prize, uh, BAFTA award for Mickey Rourke and uh, nominations for Academy Awards, uh, very strong film. Uh, Paul, uh, we'll come to you to get your final thoughts on these two films. Yeah, I mean, there you could not have two polar opposite movies in the same podcast, I don't think. Like, you, you about the same topic. Like, you, you literally... I defy somebody to come up with two movies that just are just, just, just have complete opposite reactions and, yeah. and audiences and uh, but also still trying to convey the same type of thing, which is that there is this little subculture that people love and people are willing to do horrible, horrible, horrible things to themselves for this. And I don't get it, but that's fine. It's not, yeah. you know, <laughs> It's not for everyone. It's not um, for everyone. Just, yeah. just uh, at some point, Paul, you'll know what I mean by this, or maybe you won't. But just, just be glad I didn't pick a movie called Ready to Rumble. So, uh, okay. <laughs> like you can see Vic's reaction and George. <laughs> George might walk out. Uh, he, he's disgusted. <laughs> yeah. Remember, I, did, I didn't choose that one. <laughs> so George will come to you next. I just want to throw this out there, and you know, you guys. Probably the the movie show is majority rules here, but you know what? I want to throw some films at you. Ready? The Rundown, <laughs> Walking Tall, See No Evil, The Condemned, <laughs> Twelve Rounds, doing. Twelve Rounds. Those are actually movies that I would put on a list to watch of movies. Those are all WWE <laughs> studio. <laughs> <movies. laughs> yeah, so I forget all of y'all. You know, I know most of y'all have. Bad taste in movies. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, like honestly, those are. I just wanted to throw those out there because, like, as much as I, I'm because not a regular part to you. Yeah, I'm not a regular movie watcher. Like, I'm gonna watch movies that a lot of people hate just oh, to sure. piss off other people, and I'm gonna actually like them. So, like, all those movies that I named, 
see no evil for one and i'm sorry for ranting but i'm just gonna shoot it out there see no evil gets a lot it's a pretty much a lot of it, nobody remembers that movie but i just want to throw that out there there's good kane, reason kane the big red machine undertaker's fake brother is in the movie and it is a pretty much a hack and slash movie it really is so that one was a good movie for me one other movie 12 <laughs> rounds john cena underrated movie it reminds me of a lot of speed just because of how fast the movie is and yep. how fast movie speed was so i'm just throwing those out there you guys it's a decent see. action movie it is yes. yeah it's a decent so, action movie yeah, and yeah. and you know, I, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that I've seen all the ones George is talking about, but I'm gonna throw out a title of the condemned Steve Austin's yeah. first film. Again, decent action movie, but you know, again, not something that I'm gonna make uh, any of us watch for future podcast episodes. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, well, I don't know. We got movie assignments, so uh, all I need is for <laughs> either Paul or Susan to watch one of them, and they're gonna. Susan, make don't you dare. <laughs> Just say no. Don't you do No, 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 no. You can't, no, you can't do that right? because we have plenty of cartoons that we can assign you. <laughs> There's a lot of cartoons we can assign you. All right. Leave well, me blonde, too. Oh, jeez. Ooh, <laughs> I would not do that to you, Sergio. Don't worry. But we've both seen it and he hasn't, so that's the, that's yeah. the criteria, is it not? So you were saying about this movie that you're going to make me watch? <laughs> okay, look at the time. <laughs> all right. Well, I knew that if we all five got together to talk about movies uh, related to topics that uh, that we all are familiar with and, and uh, love discussing, uh, I knew it was going to be a lot of fun. So on behalf of myself, uh, Susan Chisholm, Paul Britton, thank you so much for uh, joining the pod uh vic vespa george alvarado it's always a pleasure working with you guys thank you guys for coming together for this uh i can't say thank you enough to the folks that you guys are watching on screen this super pod uh i've been looking forward to for quite a while now and uh as has always or not always but most recently been the case vic i think you'll agree i want to say this was a brainstorm of uh george so i got to give him props for the super pod idea so thank you so much to the four of you uh, I hope that somewhere down the road we can do this again and talk about Ready to Rumble, but maybe not. So, <laughs> on I, I, of- I looked that up while you maybe. were talking oh. about it. There's no fucking chance in hell you're getting me to watch that. Movie. <laughs> I love it's it. not going to happen. I so, love it. Well, I'll tell you yeah. what, Paul. So you say you yeah. say that, and I, I get why. But uh, y'all keep an eye out for a future episode of The Three Dudes of Doom because we're actually going to talk about David Arquette in a very, very interesting documentary that just came out. So more I, on that. I just saw, yeah, I, I saw that. I saw that. Um, the the David Arquette, uh, the man who couldn't die or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yes, yeah, something like that. There's a that. deep, yeah, long story there. Yeah. Deep, long story there. Um, but yeah. Uh, he played a again, heel. He come, came out. Yeah. I'm, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, if you were watching this, then you're watching this on either the Three Dudes of Doom YouTube or the Real to Real Talk YouTube. So what we ask is that you please take a moment to subscribe to, oh, I don't know, both. Uh, Make sure you hit that notification bell and make sure you give us likes because likes equal cool stuff. So uh, we thank you so much for stopping by the show. You'll also be able to hear the audio versions of this show on both podcast streams on Podbean. Spotify, and wherever else you find your audio podcast. So once again, thank you all so much for joining me, team. Uh, And to all of you out there, remember you're awesome, you're amazing, and the world's a better place because you are in it. We'll see you next time on all of our shows. (laughs) Have a good night. (laughs)